Hi again everyone, this is Martin from How to Make Mobile Games and this way is part two of the tutorial on how to make a Pong style game in Unity 3D. So in the last video, if you follow, if you just hit this video, we've actually done a previous video before and what we did in that video is basically set up the Unity project, we set the screen size for the um, for something that was similar to like a mobile screen size like an iPhone um, we inserted a, a cube paddle which allows you to move the which, which could move left and right but we're about to do that functionality in this video and it was just a very quick introduction to Unity and, and how this tutorial series will work so the next thing uh, that we want to do so moving on the next thing that we want to do is basically we want to move the paddle obviously that's the kind of uh, one of the major things in a pong style game and, and how the player interacts with the game so what we're going to do at the bottom here is basically allow this paddle to move left and right uh, and this is pretty simple this is um, this is fairly basic uh, code work and so if you're following along you can input this yourself and then you can see how this works and but i won't explain all of the programming concepts here i'll just input the code and then explain it a little bit and then hopefully you guys can sort of uh, tweak that and, and begin to understand how scripts and how coding works inside of Unity. Okay, so let me just find out where I'm up to. So, ah, okay, so point one, save the scene. So I already saved the scene in this, uh, in the project before because I was actually trying to set up this tutorial video so I needed to save it. So when I say save the scene, what I mean is save the level. So Unity has a, 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 the ability to save a project, and within that project, you can you can contain uh, many different scenes, which are like levels. So, for example, like you might have World One, World Two. The menu might be a level as well. The credit screen might be a separate level. And what levels allow you to do is just make sure that everything stays um, uh, sort of a little bit tidy and, and in its own compartment, its own box. So in our games, what I do is, is I make the menu screen as a separate scene. And then when the, cl when the player clicks on play, it then loads a new scene, which might be the main game or it might be the instruction screen. And that allows us to keep things separate and a little bit tidy as well. And it also reduces the memory overhead because you don't want to load all of your game objects into one scene because then the memory would just be, it could, over, it could be too high for particular devices like an iPhone or an Android. So to save the scene, um, all you would do basically is go into file and then save scene. Now I've already saved the scene, but if you click save scene, you'll get this pop-up box here. I'm just gonna click save scene as so that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, and then what you wanna do is go to the folder where, you're, where you wanna save it, which is in the projects folder where, you, where we originally created it in video one. So Pong style game, Pong style game. Go into the assets folder. This is, a lot of this is automatically created. Go into, click on assets, then make a new folder called scenes, which is what I already did. And that's obviously the folder where we're going to keep all of our levels or scenes, as they're called in Unity. And then save it as main game, okay? Uh, that's obviously because it's the main game and, and that's where we're going to have most of the functionality, okay? And then just click save and then that will, that will save it to, to, that, to, to that folder. So we can find that later and we can open it up if necessary, okay? And then what you'll find in here, in the project view here, the project view is basically just like Windows Explorer or Finder on the Mac but it's inside of Unity. So any, any files that you put within the project, any assets, any folders will all appear here. And this is just like an Explorer view. Uh, but just a note though, if you do change everything, do change it here if you can, because um, Unity keeps a track of where all the objects are. So don't go out into Windows Explorer or Finder and then move things around because Unity won't be able to track where the different objects are because it links to them. So if you do move things around, make sure you move them around here in the project view as much as possible, okay? So that's saving a scene anyway. So the next thing that we wanted to do is uh, create a scripts folder, okay? So what you can do in the project view here is if you right click and click create and then tap on folder, or if you go to create and then tap folder, you've got a new folder will appear and that's just the same as like Windows Explorer and, and uh, Finder on the Mac. So I'm going to call this um, I'm going to call this Pong scripts, okay? And the script is just basically a code file uh, that we use in Unity. So uh, so we click, we've created the Pong script folder. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click on Create and then JavaScript. And I'm going to call this paddle P A D D L E. 
Okay. Now, let me just check that I'm following along correctly in my little guide here. All right. So what I'm going to do is double tap on that. And what it'll do is open up uh, Mono Develop. Okay. Uh, Mono Develop is um, the, the script editing tool that comes with Unity. Uh, I believe it also comes with another one called Unitron, but it doesn't really matter so much um, which one you use. They're both pretty much the same. You can you you can actually make code for Unity inside of Notepad if you wanted to. Uh, it's just any text editor, but things like Mono Develop and uh, Unitron are really cool because what they do is they allow they when you type in certain functions or code, it formats it so it adds a different color or it adds like a different tab so that it moves along and it, it all looks a lot neater. Um, so you can also use um, a Visual Studio with Unity as well, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use Mono Develop. Okay. So what I did is just to just to clarify, is I double tapped on the paddle here, uh, the paddle script, and that op that opened up uh, Mono Develop. Okay. Now what I'm going to do. Oh, by the way, the Mono Develop icon, if you can't find it, is like this one just here. I'm just dragging it up so that you can see it. So if you ever need to open it externally, then you can do that. Now, I'm just going to grab code from uh, another script that I prepared earlier, and I'm just going to highlight this, I'm going to delete it, and I'm just going to paste this in. So I'm, I'm, to paste, I'm hitting Command and V, or Control and V on, the, on a PC. So uh, the reason that I've actually prepared this script before is that I wanted to uh, just test the script first, as opposed to write the script and then have some errors and then have to come back and then change it whilst on the video. I wanted to test the script first so that I'm giving you um, a script that is fully functional from the beginning. Uh, you know, obviously the, the coding process, the game development process will always include bugs and, and programmers always have to go back and check things and, and look things up on how to find certain script functions and so on. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to make this smooth and, and pretty, uh, pretty straightforward without wasting too much time. Uh, the developer diary videos within, inside our channel uh, are actually more how development works on a day-to-day -day basis, so definitely check them out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let me just explain some of these points here. So feel free to copy this, of course. Um, you know, this is this is for anyone to use and, and you can use it in your own projects however you'd like to use it. So this basically here, this function, uh, what a function does is, how can I explain this easily? So a function is, a piece of code which runs whenever you call it. So for example, if I call a function that says build car, it will build a car if I've, uh, if I've created the code to build the car. Let's say I make a function that's called hello world, uh, which is like a kind of standard first timer um, uh, program to create. What I'll do is if I call that hello world function is it will display on the screen hello world if I've wrote that code inside of the function. So the function is just like a command. That's all it is really. So if, I, if I call this command, something will happen. Okay. The update function here, now this is a standard command that is pretty much used throughout all of Unity and a bunch of other engines and pretty much all of gaming as far as I'm aware. Um, and what an update function does is it just gets called every single frame that the game is drawn onto screen. Okay. So every single CPU cycle, I believe, it gets called. So what happens is, um, if you want this square to move downwards, on every single update frame, it'll say, oh, move it down one, move it down one, move it down one. And then as that frame goes around and around and around, it, it, it will appear to move um, seamlessly as if it was an animation. So that's what the update loop does, it gets called every single frame, and then whatever you put into the update loop will also get called every single frame. So in this update loop, um, what we've got here is we're detecting some input. So if input dot get mouse button, what this is saying is if the if the mouse button zero, which is the left mouse button, if that is pressed, like we've got an if statement here, then what we want to do is do this functionality here, make this happen if the left mouse button is pressed. Okay, during the update loop. So once it goes into this, if the, mouse button, if the mouse button is not pressed, then it will just ignore it and it will just go out of the loop here and then onto the next thing that it's going to do. Okay. So what we want to do inside of this if get mouse button, okay, is we want to make a raycast. Um, 
And what a raycast does is it shoots an invisible line from one point to another point or in a particular direction. And what that invisible line is, is used for, for example, in this situation is we want to detect where the player pressed on the screen. So for example, um, if we're on a mobile device and we want to basically shoot a ray where the finger was pressed on the screen directly into the game world, which is inside of Unity, which is the 3D space with the cube uh, and whatever objects we want to put in there. So when you tap on it, what it says is basically make a ray from the point on the screen directly forward through the camera. Okay. So and what we're giving it here is we're saying the we want to use the input mouse position as the position to start the ray cast. So a ray cast is I kind of think of it like a laser. You know, it's just a straight line that is point that is, that is set from one point to another point, or from one point in a direction forever. Okay. Don't worry if this doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Right? You'll be able to adjust this as you go, and, and you'll, you'll begin to figure this out. I know it's very confusing initially.